There's a growing disconnect between the general public and academics. And in my opinion, it's exactly this reason that we see so much pseudoscience now. Because actual science is having a really hard time bridging that gap between them and the general public. Hello, my name is also Milo, and I'm also a long-haired white American man who talks about the science of old things on the internet, and I'm also worried about this and have thoughts. The growing disconnect between science and the work scientists do and everyone else is something I have been vexed and worried about literally since I was in high school, and it's a large part of the reason I do the science communication work that I do. One of the big problems is just the way that scientists write, and to a lesser extent, talk within their disciplines. Almost all scientists, and as I will mention later, also philosophers, seem to be incapable of writing in anything that approximates, like, normal, common human language. This has created what is almost literally a language barrier. I often think about the work that I do as being a translation service from one language to a different language while also, you know, presenting the information in a fun, exciting way, whatever. And this translation problem comes from both sides, because on the one hand, we have ac scientists and other academics writing in an academic-only language, and on the other hand, we have a public education system that does not prioritize teaching things like how to read a scientific paper. Because science tends to be often implicitly taught as a list of facts, as a set of things that we know to be true about the universe, and not for what it really is, which is a process that is active and ongoing, and one that the ordinary person absolutely can engage with if they have some scientific literacy, and if scientists wrote with the public at least somewhat in mind, and if the current scientific research and findings were available to the public, which they are often not because they are often stuck behind crazy paywalls, which is another big problem. And I happen to wonder if that actually may make up a large part of the reason why scientists don't frequently write in anything that remotely resembles common language, because they have no motivation to, because the only other people out there that can even try to look at the stuff that they're researching and writing about are other experts in their field that are connected to some institution of higher learning and therefore have access to these journals that are usually behind paywalls for the ordinary person. Just as a couple of quick tips in that area, if you don't already know about Google Scholar, I'm usually pleasantly surprised by how frequently they have PDFs or other links to freely accessible articles. And if there's an article you really can't seem to get access to, Anna's Archive is the place to search for it. In fairness, they don't have access to stuff from like the most recent past few years, but they have basically everything else. Okay, also a few more thoughts for you. There's a philosopher I know named Elijah Milgram who wrote a book about this age of hyper-specialization, and the title of the book alone is insightful and worrying. It's called The Great Endarkenment, as a play on the Enlightenment, of course. And although, in fairness, I have not read it yet, I can still vouch for the guy because I've taken one of his classes, and I have a good friend of mine who's taken a lot of classes from him. So, certified intelligent lad, and therefore would still recommend. I'm sure a lot of the ideas in there are applicable to all kinds of academic fields, including in the sciences, even though I'm sure that most of his analysis is about philosophy, because turns out philosophers also are in an age of hyper-specialization, and most philosophers cannot write anything that the average person could even try to follow along with. And sometimes that's okay. Of course, I would never try to argue that jargon in general or spe you know, specific terms should not exist at all. People working in specific fields need to be able to talk about the specifics in those fields. And of course, language in general is a tool for humans to use to talk about things, to communicate, and to understand things, and we absolutely should create new and reinterpret old words to mean new and more interesting and more useful things to help us think about more nuanced topics. And with all that said, there has got to be a balance that could exist in academic language that very conspicuously, currently, does not. I also wonder if there may be another unfortunate trend that could be contributing to this problem, this endarkenment, this particularly this disconnect between science and the public, and that's this, that it seems that people are more and more viewing their education just as a stepping stone to getting a job, and less and less valuing their education for the sake of the education itself, for the building of knowledge, for learning how to think critically and abstractly and practically, learning how to do research, learning how to, um, to write well, and to be able to communicate with other people, etc. And don't get me wrong, ain't nothing wrong with desiring a stable fucking income. 
I desire a stable fucking income. That is totally valid. I understand. Look, there are absolutely systemic issues that are at play here. We have built a world where it pays infinitely more to be a surgeon than to be a philosopher. Now, should it pay more to be a surgeon than a philosopher? Yeah, I think so, and that's coming from a man with a philosophy degree. That being said, I do think the world would look very differently if people were almost as confident that they could make a livable wage being an academic philosopher as they could being a surgeon, as they could being a barista, what have you. But then no one will want to be doctors anymore, really. I don't think so. I think that that idea is so mistaken. In fact, I think in this ulterior world, we'd actually be much better at selecting the people we want to be doctors to in fact end up being doctors. The kind of people that are really interested in biology and in human health and actually want to help people will absolutely still want to go through the hard work in the many years of training to become doctors, especially if they know that they'll be supported along the way. And that seems like a way better system than mainly selecting the people to be doctors who either just sort of have the resources available to them to be able to pay their way through, or those that just see it as very reasonably a way to make a safe livable wage. Anyway, damn, got a little sidetracked there, and now I'm starting to sound just a little bit, teeny tiny bit too much like a socialist. Oopsie doopsie. So what am I saying? Well, I have said a lot of things, and I hope that some of it has stimulated some thought. That was the main goal. Additionally, here are some other takeaways. If you are a science communicator of any kind, Keep it up. The world needs you. And I hope that you won't take that as any kind of pat on my own back. I have not been posting anywhere close to consistently any time remotely recently because I've been doing other things. I'd like to get back to posting consistently because I do think that this kind of thing is important. If you are in school of any kind and at any level, of course, keep in mind what you think will be best for you and your future. But do not do or study what you think you're supposed to just because that's what you think you're supposed to do. And whatever you end up studying, see if you can find a way to revel in it and enjoy the process of it and really make the most of your education. I'm not doing philosophy in academia right now. I'd love to again eventually, so maybe I will be in a couple years, we'll see. But even if I don't, I would not trade my philosophy degree for almost anything. My education is where I learned how to think and communicate. And that is more important than almost anything. For the record, among the very few things that are more important are a capacity for love and empathy. If you're a scientist or a philosopher or any other kind of academic, it couldn't hurt to have the public at least a little bit more in mind when you write up your research, could it? If you are a research journal making shit tons of money by putting important cutting edge scientific research behind absurd paywalls, Fuck you, that information should all be free and open access. Again, Anna's archive, everyone. I know it's not up to date for the last few years, but it's the best I can offer for us ordinary folk. Lastly, for everyone watching, science is not a list of facts. Science is a collaborative process that humans use to learn about this grand universe that we are a part of. And I don't care who you are, science is for everybody. You, for example, you right there, yes. I am talking to you, you who's looking at me, listening to me say this right now, yes, you, you absolutely have the ability to understand what science is, what it does, how it works, and what most scientists are basically up to. And when that learning process inevitably becomes difficult, I promise there are so many people out there like myself who are so excited to help you. And really final last last thing, because Milo finished by mentioning a recorded lecture that he gave at the University of Maine, which I'm really excited to go and watch after I finish making this, I will also finish by mentioning that if you would like to have me come to your college or university, please pass along my information like my website to your institution's event coordinators. I do magic shows and I also have a talk on the beauty and power of science that is for university audiences. And if you would like me to combine those two things, I'm kind of sort of starting to work on a way to do that and I would love a more concrete reason to continue to do so. So anyway, uh, that's all. Go read a book. I just finished this one very recently, which was very good. If you're looking for recommendations, I highly recommend. Okay, bye.